Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. It's Saturday morning. Chelsea are playing Fulham in a few hours time. It might be Friday evening for some of you, but I want to talk today about this before the Fulham game because I want to keep things as honest and realistic as possible because despite whatever happens in this game today against Fulham, the points that I want to make in this video remain, I think, salient regardless of what that result is to the point where I don't think the Fulham result today has any real bearing on where Chelsea will finish this season and the destiny and fate of Maurizio Pochettino at the end of this season I don't really think is relevant to the Fulham game. So at this point right now, there's been a few videos that have been uploaded. There was Chelsea transfer news. There was my Fulham preview. You can go and check those out. Link in the description. But I want to talk today about the points that have been made from David Ornstein about Pochettino's position with his contract and the way that the club right now are looking at it. I've given my opinion so far as to what I think needs to happen. I've made it pretty clear. If you want to check out the channel, you can figure out exactly what I'm feeling right now as it comes to what the best thing for Chelsea is moving forward. I also want to add that as of right now, I genuinely don't have anybody in my mind that I think is a direct, immediate, good replacement right now for Pochettino, which I guess kind of shows the depth of the mess that we're in. Last season when it was Graham Potter, we were over it, but then we thought there were options available and we thought maybe, you know, it's not as bad as we think it is, but it is. It really is. And in this video today, we're going to talk about how the decisions are made at Chelsea. I want to talk about the issues with the roles that we call sporting directors, but quite frankly, these guys are just not doing a great job. And come the end of the season, if Chelsea don't reach the Champions League, which was the goal at the beginning of this season, and I don't think we're going to get there. I'd love to believe that we will, but the, the goal this season for me on the channel is to remain optimistic and speak my mind as opposed to just being blindly optimistic and only making videos when Chelsea are winning. That's where we're heading this year. So I want to read out this tweet here. This is from CFC Pice, but it's quoted from David Ornstein. The situation, in brackets, Pochettino will be reviewed at the end of the season. At that point, he'll be halfway through a two-year contract. Completely forgot he wasn't given a big one. Other than that, we all know this is a results industry, and we all know expectations are high at Chelsea. Their aim at the start of the season was to get Champions League qualification. So let's see how they do on that in the second half of the campaign. The thing I find absolutely bonkers about this is that there is still genuine belief somewhere that we can actually attain Champions League football. As much as I was optimistic, and nothing's changed, by the way, in terms of the Premier League, when I was building up to that Middlesbrough Carabao Cup game, the reality was we were six points off the top six. We're still six points off the top six, but to honestly think... Having witnessed what we saw at Middlesbrough, seeing players arguing, players not caring, Pochettino not really having answers, and players giving up against the championship side within 50 minutes. That, to me, fills me with zero hope and optimism that Champions League football, which is a pipe dream, is even remotely possible. You look at the business Tottenham Hotspur are doing right now, they're bringing in players that they desperately need. They're winning matches even if people aren't sure about Ange. Liverpool are great, City are back, Arsenal got more points than us, United have got more points than us, West Ham, Brighton, they've all got more points than us right now. To think, having watched Chelsea enough this season, that even when we're winning, we're not playing great, to think we're going to get more points than all of those teams above us is pure lunacy. It is absolutely ridiculous to believe that the teams above us are going to drop so many points and we're going to win so many matches that qualifying for the Champions League is possible. So, with that being said, the goal at the start of the season, having spent loads of money again, was to finish in the Champions League places. So, at the moment, the Chelsea board are saying that Maurizio Pochettino will be given until the end of the season. And as much as my opinion is that it's not going to work, he's not right, and I think he should be sacked. The reality of the situation is there really isn't anybody that the club have on their radar right now, immediately, in the middle of a season, to walk into Chelsea, click their fingers, and miraculously change things. As much as I think we need to change a lot, the reality is I understand that it ain't going to happen right now. 
And if we beat Fulham today, this video might look a little bit silly. If we smash Fulham off the park today, then I might look like an idiot. But the reality of the situation is, when it comes to Pochettino's tenure, he was given a two-year contract, which to me explains that the board looked at the crazy contract that they offered to Graham Potter and they realized that, okay, we might have had this project manager in mind that we were going to give loads of time to, and even if results are bad, we're going to wait, 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 hang on a minute, wait. It is a results-based business. David Ornstein words this one perfectly. And the fact of the matter is, Chelsea Football Club cannot be festering in mid-table. When you spend the money that we have spent, it will bite us so hard in the proverbial back end if we don't achieve European football, whether it's this season and for following seasons too. The reality also is that if we don't get Europe this season, the calibre of players that we can attract to fix the situation becomes significantly worse. It becomes more difficult to get Champions League players if you are consistently not playing in those competitions. Even the Europa League, your top, top players that right now Chelsea need a few of them. They don't go to Europe Europa League clubs. Careers are short. They want to be playing in that ultimate UEFA Champions League competition. Chelsea want to be there. Players want to be there. We won't sign those players. It's as simple as that. So with that being said, you've got to be realistic here about where Chelsea are going to finish. And I'm going to take a little look here at Max London's first tweets. I must admit, I wasn't following Max London's first. I watched Eunice, his video, talking about this two days ago now, or a day and a half ago when you watch this. And Eunice made some very good points within that video, and I want to give my thoughts on it now. First of all, Max London's first reportedly has some insider information. Chelsea will hold more internal conversations if they lose to Fulham. At least three CFC players have expressed concern over their role and Pochettino's tactical setup. Now also, in Eunice's video, he said this too. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description also, as well as our channel together shootout. Levi Colwell has to be saying, look, bruv, I'm a centre-back. You're playing me at left-back all the flipping time. No wonder I'm not doing very well. Player number one. Enzo and Caicedo, I think, are players number two. They're the £100 million plus signings. They thought they were coming into Chelsea. They thought there was going to be a plan. The football that we're playing is diabolical. And everyone's looking around, wondering how they can actually pass the ball forwards to a blue shirt without having to give it sideways, sideways, sideways. You do not spend 200 million to have players that can only just nudge it to one another in the middle of the field. Look up and they see no movement, no dynamism, and everyone's kind of given up. So I think the three players are Colwell, Caicedo, and Enzo. I might be wrong. This isn't gospel truth. I'm, I'm just coming and speculating here because that's what this video was about. It's about being realistic. We're not getting Champions League football. If that was the goal, then the writing's on the wall for Pochettino. It's as simple as that. No matter what happens between now and the end of the season, if we don't get, I'm going to say top six, he's done. Regardless of whether or not we pick up like 10 wins and eight draws between now and then, he's absolutely gone. If we go unbeaten for the rest of the season but don't get top six, Pochettino is done absolutely done so I think here the issue is in football we know from history the moment that players start to openly talk amongst themselves question the setup question the tactics of the manager it's always on the wall there's no going back from this I don't remember an example off the top of my head especially at Chelsea where there have been players in the dressing room that are like I don't know what this guy's doing you know where it ends positively I don't know any examples of this. Max London's first again. The club are on the lookout for new signings, but the lack of bids for players on the sell list is causing a delay. This is not a surprise. It's not a surprise that the players that we want to sell don't have interest from other clubs. Gallagher from Spurs, yeah, we get that because he's actually been good. Chelsea players are not very good. So what do you expect? You're not going to get bids coming in for these players that are going to be what Chelsea Football Club think they're worth what they think they can get of course they're not going to be getting that kind of money for players that are performing like absolute schoolboy idiots every week even when we're winning games at the moment we're not playing very well this does not show Chelsea players as valuable assets to another club that might want to spend money on them simple we move important to note Egbali controls every decision and the ownership wants to keep Pochettino until the summer at minimum, but things are not currently rosy behind the scenes. 
that's for sure. This is very simple to me. Pochettino here has to pull the rabbit out of the hat and change everything immediately. We've got to go from being a non-cohesive team that play awful football, don't win enough football matches, to a team that win. I don't see it happening. The truth of the matter is the players are too young and too little of them care. Second of all, is Pochettino the right guy? I don't think so. Not seen enough improvements this season from Lampard, from Potter. Simple as that. The problem also at the top. We've got to address this too. Bedad Egbali is not a football guy. So how can someone who isn't a football guy be making all of the decisions and being the guy to tick it off and sign it off? What Chelsea Football Club needs are people within the board who actually understand football, know football and make the decisions. Bedad Egbali, who is the guy who's the main guy, Todd Bowley's the face of it. Not sure what the agenda was there really, to be quite honest, because... I'm not sure if Bowley is doing a great job of being the face of it either, to be honest. But if Egbali is the decision maker, the best decision he can make will be to stop making decisions. And I don't know if that's an ego thing or not, but quite frankly, we can spend all day long talking about the naivety of the youngsters, the players, the naivety potentially of Maurizio Pochettino, the quality, the calibre. But we've got to look here at the fact that a non-football guy is making all of the decisions at Chelsea. And this is absolutely ludicrous. The best decision Egbali can make is employ people who actually know what taking Chelsea back to the top looks like. How do you do this to do that? How do we act now to get that reaction to be there? Right now, Bedad Egbali, bro? So why the hell are you the one still making all of these decisions? I do not understand this one bit and I think Chelsea no matter what happens today no matter what happens for the rest of the season maybe we do beat Middlesbrough we get to a cup final you've got to win trophies and you've got to win matches and you have to start playing better football and there's got to be some kind of tactical setup that benefits these players they've got to fix the training ground and stop getting everybody injured every time we train like tell me one positive right now about the way that the club is ran. Please do. I wanted to get this video out there because it's been a crazy week, a chaotic week after that Middlesbrough result. It's shone a lot of lights for me about what needs to happen here, the reality of the situation. Let's hope we beat Fulham today. Six Things We Learned will be out straight after the match. Thank you guys for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this in the comments down below. Come on, you Blues. Let's get a win today. And... The next few days could be a bit nicer than the last few. Come on, you blues.